when I'm in my studio working, I, I feel a little bit like a like a mad scientist. I'm, I'm trying to figure something out, and I'm trying to explore things that I don't really understand and get a, a better understanding of things. I use a huge variety of tools depending on what it is I'm trying to do. The role of an artist before the camera was to document things in the way that things looked. After the camera was invented, it was able to do a lot of that job. So artists were able to paint their feelings or express themselves in a way that might not copy life, but maybe come from their imagination or their feelings. I enjoy the process of making art more than the finished art. The exploration of an idea or a material or a story or, or a history. Art gives me an opportunity to, to learn those things. Lately, I've been using the iPad a lot. It, it's been a revolutionary tool that has changed the way we do a lot of things, and it's definitely changed the way I make art. I'm trying to combine traditional techniques with more modern art-making techniques. I've done a few experimental animations where I would take prints that were made with my antique etching press with traditional printmaking techniques, and I would use computers to make them move and, and react to different touch or, or, or triggers. I define Ken's work really by when I first saw it, I looked at it and I, I couldn't put my finger on where it was coming from. And then I found out from him that his grandmother and his mother had inspired his work and they were quilters. And I looked at his work and immediately it was obvious. The quilting nature was there. When it all comes together, I'll stand back and say, wow, I can't believe that came out of me. It, it does have a life of its own. If I was to describe Ken's work, whimsical, colorful, and quirky, just like Ken himself. I decided to start painting my van. Over time and as I traveled, I would add different paintings that represented the place I was. It, it's almost like a moving journal and I'll, I'll add things to the van as I travel. And it's also a great way to show art to people who might not ever go to a gallery. What people take away from Ken's art is exactly what I took away from it the first time I saw it. It made me smile. It made me happy. It made me want to own it because I wanted to put a piece of that happiness on my wall. His work spoke to me. People love it. It makes them happy. It's very accessible and he has an incredible way with colors. Turn me loose and I'll explore the mediums and figure out how the process works through doing it. Most of what I do is, is self-taught. I've been trying to learn how to teach others to make art. I've been really lucky to meet the people at the Baker Hunt Cultural Arts Center. They encouraged me to start teaching workshops at their, their school. A friend of mine suffered from depression and she committed suicide. And I'm not very good at, at, at dealing with, with grief or those kind of, of heavy feelings. But just a few weeks after her death, her mom and dad came to my studio and asked if I could make something to use as a memorial for their daughter. I felt like it was such an honor that they asked me to do that. Mackenzie loved books. Um, she read a lot of books. She loved horses and, uh, and she loved the library. And so it just felt that it was just right that, uh, you know, we would do something in her honor here to where hopefully we can, you know, help other people with, um, her disease she had and mental illness and, you know, and get the word out. I think that's what she wanted us to do. And this was a great way to do it with uh, Ken and his art. Uh, matter, you know, she knew Ken, Ken knew her. An amazing thing about the project, the more we did the art, I, I could see her parents dealing with this horrible 
thing that happened? We weren't really artists, so we, when we started out with the project, I wanted Ken to do the mural. <laughs> but he said, no, we want, I want your family and, your, and Mackenzie's family and friends and, and different people that were part of her life to be a part of it. So I was kind of hesitant on how good of artists we would be or how good of artists they would be. So when we were working in the art guild on the murals, he would say, now, you know, this is, if you paint it, you know, I'll go back and, and make it look the way I want to look, but you'll be doing a part of it. I have a hard time putting words to what happened while we made made the mural, but um, it was just awesome. It was, it was so amazing to see everybody involved in, in remembering their, their, their loved one. We trusted his artwork and trusted his judgment and he guided us along the way and we were, were little, we were artists for a day, but the more we got into it, the more we wanted other people to do it because it was such a good feeling. You know, it just helped everyone to deal with what was going on. A big thing I learned during the project was that art could be used as a tool for healing. The family that came to me wanting the memorial were completely different people from the people presenting the finished piece. It's almost like a magic thing that happens when you're making making art. I, I love the surprise of it. it. It definitely has a life of its own.